just got real at Mickey no, D's. Okay. Give me a second. I don't have a second. I'm going to oh. ride. I'm going to sit here with a well, ride. Well, I don't know. I'm thinking you're going to go to the question mark for the same time. Look up the person. There you go. There's only this person right here. And I have someone over there, too. Okay. Well, you're, there's you more are than really one person me, here. There's more than one person working at a McDonald's, yo. I want my they fucking meal. They cannot help you. They cannot help you. Talk to the lady over the phone. Talk to the lady over the phone. Can somebody here help me? Why is everybody here at Down Syndrome? Can somebody Excuse fucking me? help me? Although one could feel an outburst coming, to say this to workers is uncalled for and disappointing. Why does everybody here have Down syndrome? I need help. You can leave, sir. I got my meal paid you for. I ain't going no it's not, it's, I don't have no order. order. You can my leave, food, sir. No, my code is right here. You Talk can to leave. lady. I'm not you going to call the cops. Bro, call the police. No, when they ask the patron to leave, he continues berating the workers. Nah, bro. They my food paid for, bro. It's not paid for because I don't have My food is paid for, you stupid then the man, after verbally assaulting the worker, threatens to spit in her face. The video cuts out, but we have some thoughts. As we have covered in July of last year, as states relax their restrictions, restaurant employment recovered, although the industry is still down 750,000 jobs. Roughly 6.1% of the workforce from pre-pandemic levels. That was as of May last year, according to the National Restaurant Association. At the time, patrons started noticing the differences with them mentioning short staffing three times more often in their Yelp reviews than in the year ago period, according to the restaurant review site. Mentions of long waits rose 23%. One Dallas-based consumer strategy and insight specialist, Lisa Miller, told a local ABC affiliate, the labor shortage right now is certainly being impacted by the consumer behavior, and I think all of us need to acknowledge that. Okay, fine, but I wouldn't call it a labor shortage. I would say it is corporations nickel and diming those who are trying to work and enter the labor force. The fact is folks are quitting and not returning because of customers like the one we saw in the first part of this video. Fast forward to fall 2022. The number of people quitting while down from the peak remains at the highest level since the 70s. White collar workers don't want to give up working remotely. Who would? I do. I would never want to give this up again. Low-paying sectors such as the hospitality industry cannot find enough people willing to work for the wages they have been offered. Union organizing and strikes have been on an upswing, which is awesome. Insider previously reported, the data does show that workers are parachuting out of a certain type of job, low-wage work. Quits in leisure and hospitality hit a record high in November. 6.9% of the accommodation and food services workforce quit in November. All told, over 1 million leisure and hospitality workers quit. Retail trade workers also quit well above the average, with the industry losing 4.4% of its workforce to quitting. Workers leaving low-wage jobs in mass and at far higher levels than other industries supports a theory that current labor crunches are more akin to a wage shortage. That is what it is than a labor shortage. It is a wage shortage. Switching jobs is one reliable way to make more money. And the latest data shows low-wage workers are doing just that. 